perception. We all judge someone as soon as we meet them. As soon as I got onto the TEDx red circle, you viewed me, you looked at the way that I walk, you look at the way that I talk, and you look at the way that I look. First impressions. We normally have a first impression and gather that information within the first, first 30 seconds of actually meeting someone. I believe that humans are visually biased. They automatically make judgments. This woman is one of the women in my project, and she has told me that she thinks she is ugly because of the amount of wrinkles that she has. I think that wrinkles typically show how much character you have and how many things you've been through in your life. Self-identity. Our beliefs and values stem from our community. We learn all the different things about what is right and what is wrong. We learn that what is acceptable and expected. We learn all these things to get along and to have... I've lost my... Hang on. And to, to have uh, a better society, to get better on in the world, to have more things. Uh, societies, cultures, they use uh, their beliefs and they reflect their beliefs in the way that they talk, they walk, and they dress and they adorn their body. It's a way of showing where they are from, where they belong. Culture is embedded in each one of us and it forms our sense of identity. Beauty, here's a beautiful ballerina. But when we look at that, we think, you know, this is a beautiful uh, object, this is a beautiful woman. But how far will we go to be beautiful? There are accepted norms in every culture, and we don't always accept them. You look at some women who, um, from some tribes, that they will have lip discs, um, they will have their double eyelid surgery, they will have their breasts augmented, or they'll have a rib removed, uh, or they'll have their feet bound. The real truth behind a ballerina's foot is that it is damaged. People generally do not want to know the damage behind any form of beauty. In today's society, we are pushing the boundaries. These are the Cayenne women in the Philippines and, and in Burma and in Vietnam. They wear brass coils around their neck. Imagine these brass coils pushing down on your collarbone, stretching your neck up to the heavens. Think of the pride they have in their achievement. Think of the place they have in their community. Women in Victorian times used to wear corsetry from a young age. Children, young daughters were made to wear corsets until they actually realized what the damage was being done to the internal organs. So it fell out of style. Double eyelid surgery in China. You can see from the image that on the, the, the bottom one is where they actually have enlarged, made wider the eyes to make them look more Caucasian. Standards of beauty are both deeply personal and thoroughly embedded in a culture. We judge those standards and fault people for what they have done just to achieve a better life. Here is an average chicken. <laughs> Chickens used to roam around free, and more often they have been put in cages. They are bred to have succulent breasts, succulent meat, uh, juicy thighs. And quite often this is done by feeding them chicken pelts. And this increases the meat on their, their, their breasts and on their thighs in a very fast way. These same pills are fed to, to women in Africa and all over the world, so they too can have more succulent breasts and juicier thighs. The International Society of Aesthetic Plastic Surgery said there was more than 320,000 bottom surgeries performed last year. There has been a rapid increase in plastic surgery over the last year has increased by 
This graph kind of shows the top 10 countries, number one, USA, number two, Brazil, number three, China. The British Association of Aesthetic Plastic Surgery has said there is a new trend, and this trend is called uh, tweaked, not tucked. So people are going for more natural looks. And if you think of in the press recently, people like Renee Selwiger and Uma Thurman have all been demonized for changing their look. But it looks fairly natural, but it's, they know something's different, something has gone wrong. So, how far would you go to make yourself feel better? Cosmetic surgery also goes to feet. This, um, there are foot facelifts, facelifts that you can have. You can have Botox put into the pads of your feet so you can wear higher heels. There is also a surgery called toe tucks, where the little bone, uh, the little toe, the bone is shaved so you can wear pointy shoes. On a recent trip to China, I was there for three weeks, and I confess I did not bother to pluck my eyebrows, shave my armpits, shave or wax my legs, and it was very liberating. Pubic hair is considered unattractive. I mean, even recently, Instagram banned photographs of bikini models who were showing they had pubic hair. It has been reinstated now. And if you think about it, kings used to keep hairs, pubic hairs of their lovers in snuff boxes. So it it's kind of has changed a bit around. <laughs> but if you have ever thought about the hum humiliation of pain of Brazilian wax, then you have to question about what is barbaric when you actually do change your looks. So for the past eight years, I have been documenting the last remaining women in China with bound feet. People's immediate reaction is that this was a barbaric tradition, and they shy away from looking at my photographs, and they usually have a negative connotation. And what I have been working on doing is trying to show that these women are incredible, generous, lovely women in their 80s and 90s who deserve to have some kind of uh, documentation of who they are rather than the beautiful embroidered shoes that are normally shown or the talk of the eroticness of foot binding. They have lived not only through foot binding, they lived through the Cultural Revolution and the Great Famine. And as a photographer, I tell their stories. So foot binding was a custom that was in China. It mainly started in the Shang Dynasty. They think it was around 1130 um, AD that the um, foot binding was first mentioned in any books. It uh, was perpetuated in the Qing and the Ming Dynasties. And it was said to have started because an emperor saw a courtesan dancing on a lily pad, and she was so beautiful that they decided, that the other courtesans decided that to gain favor, they too would have their feet bound. It was perpetuated by Confucianism, the philosophy in China. Sang Kong Di Si Di is the three obediences, and that is to honor your father, your husband, and your son, and the four virtues morality, proper speech, modest manage, manner, and diligent work. It was also filial piety. Filial piety is having the respect for um, your mother, your father, your husband, and your son. So the small toes were actually wrapped underneath the feet, and the big toe remained out. Then a big long binding was put around the foot bringing the heel closer to the metatarsals, creating like a cavern in the middle. And you can see from these diagrams a, a, a typical foot next to a, a bound foot, and underneath a photograph of a woman, and you can see like the cavern that wraps in the middle. Why did foot binding stop? There was uh, Chinese reformers who did try to stop foot binding, but eventually what happened was with the Opium War, there were more traders coming into China and missionaries, and they set up anti-foot binding societies and went around the country to try and stop foot binding. 
It was a time when old traditions were looked down upon, and the move to modernization, China felt that foot binding was no longer part of, their, um, th of the country. It was banned in 1912 for the uh, formation of the Republic of China, but carried on specifically in more rural areas than in the cities. And it was finally banned completely in 1949. So by the start of the Cultural Revolution, which during that time, people were penalized for the four olds, old habits, old manners, old customs, and old culture. You will see from these photographs that there wasn't the typical foot-bound shaping, the beautiful shape. There wasn't the perfect lotus foot, which is what they were sometimes called. As there were no guidelines written down to actually how this should be done, mothers and grandmothers bound these women's feet because they wanted their daughters or their grandchildren to have a better life. That's the main thing you have to think about, that this was part of their culture, and that was the only way that they could move forward and be something. And who would not do that for their daughters? Most of the women that I photographed have pointed out that my feet were much smaller. So there's a sense of pride, because they, most of them had them unbound for 40, 50, 60 years. This is the first woman I met in 2006, Zhang Yongying. I held her foot in my hand, and it was so soft and amazing, the form. There was a kind of empathy that I felt when just holding her foot. It was just incredible. She had her feet bound at the age of seven and unbound when she was 20. I go back every year and visit with her. Last November, I met a new woman, also called Zhang Yongying, who was about 60 kilometers away from the first woman. She is 103 years old, but she says she's only 99, because anything older would mean that she should be dead. <laughs> so um, she has nine children and moves every month to a different son or daughter um, so that uh, they can look after her. Zhao Huayong was a beautiful woman. Uh, she had had a stroke three years before I met her, and she was one of the fortunate ones to still have her husband around, as most of them die much younger than these women. Uh, she unfortunately died uh, two years ago, but she, while I met her and photographed her, I had to interview her husband rather than her, as she could not speak, and she was partially deaf. Her husband, he was illiterate, just like the majority of these people in the farm, in the rural areas. And so he used to have to shout at her because she was partially deaf. Her feet were bound at the age of 15 when they married in 1948. Yang Yongying, she was 11 years old when she had her feet bound. What happened was that she went to see her grandfather on his birthday and they held this big birthday party, and everything was going really well. And then, their aunts, they started teasing her. Your feet are big. Your feet look like boys' feet. So immediately when she got home, her mother bound her feet. So what had been a very joyous occasion actually turned out to be one of the worst days of her life. Yang Jing has the most beautifully kept house. It was all in pale pinks and pale greens, and she had all these 1940s and 50s posters, very Vogue-esque models. Um, and she, I, I have a nickname her for her. I call her Biggles, because the first time I met her, she had these huge glasses on. Most of them I do have like a, a, um, a name for. Her feet were bound when she was five years old by her grandmother. She, when I went to visit her last, which was in November, uh, she was staying with her son, who's the local bread maker. They make a bread called mantu, and uh, they welcomed me into their house. Sun Bao Rong, she had her feet bound when she was seven. Uh, her her mother-in-law treated her like another daughter, and so she was very happy. She said that when she had first bound her feet, that 
she wasn't forced to bind her feet. She did it herself at the age of seven, which happened fairly often, I have found, that these women actually did bind their own feet because they knew it was the only way forward for them. Uh, she had four younger sisters, and none of them had bound their feet. She um, thought her feet were beautiful. No, today she no longer does. Su Shi Rong is one of the first women I photographed. She was known as the most beautiful woman in her village because of her well-formed bound feet. Her feet were bound at seven. This woman, Si Yin Shin, she was an extremely feisty old lady. She was 90 when I met her, and I interviewed her, and I photographed her, and that's what I normally do, and then I say, right, now we need to take off the shoes. And in fact, this photograph here, that has no shoes or socks on. That is a naked foot. And in fact, so many of these feet no longer look like feet anymore. So she was a little feisty and said, no, I don't want my photo taken now, and ran off, or kind of walked off. They do walk a lot. Most of these women, remember, are uh, farmers in rural areas and have worked on farms for 60 years. I eventually managed to coax her out when one of her friends came around. Pu Hei Ying, she um, does bowling. She's been bowling for the last 20 years, and she wins competitions in Kunming. She uh, had her feet bound at seven and married at 16. This is a sad story. This is a new woman I just met, Lu Fen Lang. She was kidnapped as a child to be made as a bride. She doesn't know when her birthday is, but celebrates it every spring festival. She had 10 children. Nine of those died during the famine. All of them were under the age of three. And her only son gave birth to a son, so she had a grandson and that grandson died of leukemia when he was 19. This is my neighbor, um, my, sorry, my translator's neighbor, and she uh, had her feet bound when she was 11 years old. She said it hurt, but she didn't cry because it was the only way to be more beautiful. Ding Pei Lan, she fractured her hips seven years ago and has been bed bound ever since an incredible woman. She held my hand and kept saying to me, I wish I could go to sleep and never wake up. She had her feet bound at the age of eight, and her mother would beat her if she didn't, if she tried to unbind them. Kao Mei Ying, her feet were bound at three, which is unusual. Most of the women I've met are between the ages of seven and 11 that they had their feet bound. She had them bound at three and unbound them in 1999. And nobody, including her relatives, could tell me why she suddenly decided to unbind them so late. But it was the first time I realized that these village women often become invisible, and it's someone like me that goes in and makes them feel important again. They're the old ladies of the village, and they, um, their lives are incredible. It's important to know what they lived through. I spent many happy hours with Gao and her husband, Ding, cooking amazing food. Um, she actually bound her own feet at the age of 15. She did it herself after watching her mother. Fu Shi Xing married at the age of 25, and her husband was 33. Um, at the, around the age of 10, she was told, it's time to have your feet bound. In the past, beauty was defined by individual cultures. Today, we have more of a global, standardized concept of beauty. It's becoming more homogenized. Next time you make a judgment on your own perception of beauty, think beyond the facade and reevaluate the way you look at others. How far will you go to be aesthetically pleasing? Thank you.